Red 2 standing by, all 4 lit, and in the green, welcome back to Super Mario 64 DS, where I am heading through Womp's Fortress with the man in green, Luigi. Luigi, as I've said several times, makes platforming so painfully easy it's not funny. That amazing backflip of his just performs so well and allows you to scale... Ah, rightio. Keep going, but don't rush. I wonder. I can't... Oh, that, that delicious... Del that backflip and the delicious, delicious gouda it provides. This, this man... Well, apart from the dodgy controls, not quite being able to move with considerable sophistication. The fact that it is only 8-way run unless you use the touch screen is a real pain in the backside, but... Wonky can... Alright, Wonky can... Luigi is powerful. Luigi can do incredible things. Luigi is not immune to wonky controls. But, if you actually do manage to fight the controls... You have some delicious cheese on your side. Alright. That was a weird one. Yeah, so apart from the slightly janky controls, that's ridiculously simple. That is absolutely ridiculously simple. I didn't realize I could stand on the sign to get up there. That was amazing. So yeah, just find a shortcut. I do need to open the cannon. But I will need that for Blast Away the Wall. I don't need it for this. So you want me to shoot into the wild blue and risk a fairly dodgy cannon shot. Nah, bro. Mind the camera, can I do it from here? Not quite. But I can just do that. It's almost unfair. It really is just unfair. Hold on. So I will... Well, I'll jump back in. Literally. So, fall onto the caged island... Because we are, we usually need the owl for that one. But there's the big question. Can I Luigi it? The, the answer is probably. I'll demo what we're supposed to do for shoot into the wild blue. Now, I believe we have to specific, we have to line it up about there. I'd say. There. Fire! Give Luigi massive cranial trauma. And that's how we normally get that star. With a very well-timed shot from the cannon. Now, I want to scale the entire... I want to scale the entire tower again. Because I have to see, normally... Well, I'll use the owl to get up there. I'll demonstrate exactly what you're supposed to do. But since this is basically a relaxation project and I get to do what I want, I'm going to see if I can Luigi this. So the owl allows us to press and hold B to hold on, release B to let go, and watch the shadow and hold on. So, the camera angle will be a little bit janky. But there's our island. So that's how we're supposed to do it, with the owl. Oh, don't land on that. So, line myself up. Yeah. 
Can I do it? Camera's f fighting the camera. We... Oh, that, uh, that's a backflip. I didn't want to do a backflip. But, yes, you can Luigi it. It might take a bit of setup, but being lazy does take a bit of work sometimes. But yes, that is an amazing demonstration of the power that backflip has. Let's go. It, it, it's... I've been gushing about that for a fair bit. But, like, we've just broken this open. It's kind of interesting. I wonder why, though. I wonder why this level was actually the one chosen to represent uh, Super Mario Galaxy. To represent the game in Galaxy 2. I suppose it's because... I suppose it's because it's actually floating. Okay, so now this is different. This one was probably chosen to represent Super Mario 64 for Throwback Galaxy because of the fact it's floating in mid-air and you can have a few different islands. It's this instead of Bob on Battlefield or something like that because those are enclosed areas whereas this one is very clearly floating in the sky. Now, in Mario 64, the star for Blast Away the Wall could actually be accessed by clipping through the wall somehow, I don't exactly know how to do it, because of the nature of the star. It was just there, and you could e very easily get a hold of it by clipping through in a specific way. You didn't have to blast away the wall. This time you blast away the wall and the star actually appears, so that little exploit was taken out. Nice, nice, nice! Luigi gets no respect from the toads, but he is efficient. What does this toad have to say? Oh yeah, this one roasts Luigi hard. You're Luigi, the world's most inept and least charismatic brother? Wow! Can you introduce me to Mario? Huh, did we meet the other day? I totally forgot, you're not very memorable. Guess your brother got all the charisma in the family, huh? Luigi, I will not blame you if you take him out into the moat and leave him there. So, Luigi is going to take a break for a bit, because otherwise he's going to wind up throwing a whole lot of toads into the moat, and is going to have to answer some very awkward questions about why most of Peach's retinue has been drowned. Return to the door of the character you're playing to wind up playing as Yoshi again. I'm, we're going to Cool Cool Mountain, but first I want to go outside. If we head outside, we can actually get an array of rabbits. Where are the rabbits? Okay. <coughs> I'll cut that bit out. So yes, very sniffly from hay fever, sorry. So there are suppo- I think I have to open the basement. But I'm not sure what's going on. There are supposed to be rabbits out there. Ones that surrender the keys to various minigames. That was unusual. So, we'll we'll go into Cool Cool Mountain and I've chosen Yoshi because we need to eat some fire. Yoshi can swallow flames and spit them out to get coins. So, normally there are some rabbits outside which Yoshi can actually wind up catching. Well, any of the characters can catch Specific coloured rabbits, Yoshi has the sort of yellowish ones, Mario's are red, Luigi's are green, and Wario's are brown, and they'll unlock new minigames. You will also need to catch those rabbits, so that rabbits which have already been caught can have a chance at being white rabbits, and if you catch one of those, you'll get a counter towards the secret star behind that white door. Eight, eight white rabbits means the secret star. So, let's 
get onto the job. And... In we go. So, I want to get plenty of coins first off. When you're doing this, always, ugh, always try and grab as many coins as you can and, oh dear. Oh, it is absolutely just a hay fever day today. Like, do any of you, ooh, ever get that feeling where it's just like, that burning sensation that just sears your nose and just shoots up through your brain and hurt. It's not going to your brain, it's actually going to your sinus cavity. But it just hurts like bilio. That... That is one of the things I have to deal with. I suspect I've got some sort of sinusitis or whatever. But that's one of the main manifestations of my hay fever, that annoying burning. Anyway, I should probably stop ranting about that. They added an owl to this area, which I do not need. Now this ice, that is for a switch star, which you can access via the gondola. So, <clears throat> the bob on buddy is there, but you cannot break this with other characters. You must have Wario. I don't want the Luigi hat, I want the coins. Oh well, I'll sacrifice that coin. Because if we wind up killing those Goombas, we'll wind up taking the hat. <clears throat> now here's a question. Most of the time those Goombas will run away and just stare, m stare in maudlin fashion at the edge of the area. Hang on. Dude, that... Wow, that, that, that's tragic. It just... It just tried to run away from me so hard and it just exploded. That... That's some... That's some heavy stuff, man. That... Man, that Goomba must have been just so terrified of Yoshi. It, I have never actually seen a Goomba take its own life like that. I have been able to bait Goombas into literally running circles around me. But I have not seen a Goomba so driven to escape me that it will literally explode out of fear or desperation at running away and making sure I don't claim its coin. That's... That's bizarre. That is some bizarre stuff. Now, I don't know why Yoshi's Ground Pound can't deal with these. I did actually check something, and I was able to confirm that slide kicks do not actually affect the boxes. So, Yoshi's slide kick just bounces off. Let's grab Weege for a bit. And... Completely miss... So I did hit it then, I think. Get my focus just right. So yeah, we can't break them with uh, with slide kicks. It's got to be good old punches and the coins will go flying, which means a lot of running around on very slippery areas. And there's a Koopa shell for whatever unfathomable reason. There's really not, unless you want to actually go back uphill, there's not a lot you can do. Now, I need to find the spin drift that's around here so I can get some coins, and then we can go back up to the top of the area. There we go. So I can get the 100 coin star too. And watch me slide very slowly and land... The cap went off the edge, because of course it did. Where is it now? 
Is it back around? It's... Oh, it's all the way down there. Well, I need to go over this way anyway. So, yeah, for some reason you often will wind up just randomly sliding if you bump into the walls. Ice physics are a bugbear of mine. As pretty much anybody who's watched my videos will know, I spend a lot of time complaining about ice physics. I think they're really terribly implemented. It's generally forcing you to play the game again. Or at least learn how to. Right. Only two blue coins, but... Let's get up the hill and get the other one. And then collect this for a decent coin score. I can get some more coins further up. Which I'm going to, so just bear with me while I... Uh... Oh, there's a spin drift down here. So, spin drifts, because they have three coins in them. So. Is it going to... Are you going to attack me? Now, can I get them to... Do it's usually not the ones with hats, because they'll run away. Alright, so <clears throat> some of those coins went off the edge. Grab Luigi and I'll head back up to pick up a few more coins. And I can also demonstrate something that I didn't show off earlier. So, we've collected six red coins, but where are the other two, you might ask? They're up here. So, one of them is still on, uh, is still on the slope near the bridge. But it's in... It's in a block of ice like this one. Yoshi needs to swallow some fire in order to access those coins. But otherwise, we can just sort of go on our merry way. I'm probably getting a little bit greedy. But I do like going coin collecting and actually showing you where to go. It's half the fun of it. It's a little bit instructional, a little bit entertaining, a little bit shambolic. It's hopefully a lot of a lot of little things that wind up being an entertaining project. So yeah, this is basically a snowy version of the athletic theme. And even that's sort of a sped up version of the uh, main theme. It's pretty neat how they do all those little variations. The compositions are stellar in these games. It's really, really good how they can just get all those neat variations on a theme that works so well. It's been a real hallmark of Nintendo over the years. Just the beauty... I mean, they're not the only company that does it, but the beautiful video game music of various Nintendo titles has always been something I've genuinely loved and just genuinely been able to switch off and relax with. Now, move very carefully. Move over here. Backflip away! Drop. So you know how normally you'd have to use the cannon for this bit? Luigi laughs at your cannon! Luigi laughs at so many things. Luigi laughs having to walk along a narrow ledge guarded by spin drifts and having to do a long jump before timing your wall kicks, which was really terrible in the original version, but much easier because Mario skids down the wall now. It's almost like don't use Luigi. Because, uh, it's nice to show off all these shortcuts, though. But it also just shows how much Luigi breaks the game. Mario Super Wall Kick, get that out of here. Luigi's backflip. There's always some sort of method. There's usually some sort of method to break the game somewhere along the way. And it's kind of tit for tat as far as I'm concerned. 
because in so many occasions you'll get games that just screw you over with their own mechanics. It might be terrible controls, it might be really bad design, it might be... It might be rubber band AI or some sort of special AI moves. Oh yeah, follow those coins for a shortcut that only works when you're doing this. If you do the penguin race, you'll get disqualified. But yeah, basically... As far as I'm concerned, if the game is going to cheat you, you are allowed to cheat the game back. Break it in whatever way you like. And there we go. Well, that's slip sliding away. The more we're near our destination, the more we are slip sliding away. I'm pretty sure that was Simon and Garfunkel, or was it just one of them on their own? Well, thank you for the uh, information on that one, uh, future me. I do. I, I like the setup. I wanted to come up with something creative, and I thought, how am I going to do this? Because I had something kind of basic planned for Pokemon Ranger, which isn't going to see the light of day. Because I really wasn't feeling that. Cube Xenoblade accent. So, you will need to be Mario for this, because Yoshi physically cannot complete this, on account of the fact that Yoshi can't pick things up. He can hold things in his mouth, but... Oh, I'm really sad that this didn't... This didn't go the way uh, that I lost that footage because... Oh man, it, it was a shambles. So, I wound up down there. I think I jumped off the warp or something. I, I wound up down there. Then I wound up having to do this ridiculous jump off the slope that actually does lead to death just beneath it. Pulled off this death-defying jump, got stuck in snow. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa. And... Alright, come on, penguin. Oh, yeah, I've just realised I can't take the gondola from here. I have to carry the penguin across the bridge. Depending on how you approach it, this one can be so tedious. I mean, the shortcuts are spectacular, but yeah, that slope there, I managed to pull off some ridiculous jumps that wound up just saving my can, and I don't know how I did it. There was a lot of screaming. I wish I could show you, because I can only really describe what happened. But yeah, OBS decided to be a jerk and only record a blank screen for two and a half hours. I mean, I'm doing better on these things, but... Oh, it was... Now, of course, we do know that you can run off with the baby afterwards and drop it off the edge. It will respawn. But... I did that last... did stuff like that last time. I'm not going to be a jerk. So, yeah, I... I... I lost some frustrating moments, which is fine, but I lost some really good moments. Which is, of course, just the perils of how all this goes. Back in, and it's time to race the penguin. You can do this as any character. We don't need a hat. We're getting close to our 30 stars, too. Because last time I did a whole lot of... Uh, a whole lot of Castle Secret stars, and I was absolutely adamant that one of the red coins in the Metal Cap course I could ground pound down to from the surface of the water, and I just spent 20 minutes trying to get it, and I couldn't do it. So you've been spared that. But once I was sort of wrapping things up, I realised I could have done stuff in Womp's Fortress. So, let's race this penguin! He's got a head start. Take him on the inside. Don't worry about jumping. Now, the penguin rubber banded like mad in Mario 64. In this, uh, not so much. I was also, I also pointed out there, as I will now, that if you are airborne for more than two seconds at a time, then you will be disqualified. 
Where's the penguin? No! Oh, that janky handling. I'm going to... Uh, no, it's not the penguin's fault. I'm not that penguin's fault. It's the... It's the... It's the handling. I was trying to see where the penguin was and I walked out the door. Oh, well, at least you got to see something go wrong. Hooray, we're artificially lengthening the video because of crappy controls. Look, I'm not going to lie. The controls in this are terrible sometimes. The, like, the fact that it was designed to be controlled with the touch screen? How were you meant to do that? But yeah, I was going to say, I've mentioned it uh, in the little, in the notes painting. But, um, the work of Pan and Coke 2012, and the entire, and pretty much the entire A button uh, challenge community. That's brought up some amazing stuff with this, but it was through watching uh, those videos, often the uh, the uncommentated Pannon ones, that I wound up finding out that... Wow, the penguin is a long way behind me. But if you are airborne for two seconds or more, then you will be disqualified. Give me my star. So there are all sorts of fascinating little things on those two channels. Not just... Uh, Stuff like the mimetic watch for rolling rocks and all the glitches that have come out of the Aiden Button Challenge and all the, well, not just that, but the phenomenal dissection of the game. But there are so many little different bits and pieces about the way things work in this game. And I absolutely love that. So I think we'll probably wrap things up. No, I got a bit of time. The red coin hunt, we can, well, I'll clean up Cool Cool Mountain and then we can go challenge Bowser next episode. So we do need Yoshi, but yet, yeah, Pan and Coke 2012 is a really, really good source of information about everything Mario 64. Like, even, ba even basic video, even videos on how basic, seemingly basic stuff like walls, ceilings, and floors interact in this game it's it's so in depth it is re they're really those videos are really worth a look if you really want to go into all the fascinating minutiae of the game like i'm more than happy to recommend other people uh, if i've uh, been enjoying their work because i think that's the entire point of it that if somebody's work brings you happiness Go out there and support them. Like, I don't get anything out of saying that. I just hope that I can spread a little bit of happiness for someone else. And I hope I can give a little bit of happiness to you, too. That's really all it boils down to. So, our bob on buddy will tell us where everything is. And we can get a few uh, coins... Around here, I probably will need to... Okay, move very carefully. There is one here, but we can't access the gondola. Well, we'll call it a gondola. It's more like the camera is fighting me. Okay. If we try and turn, we wind up... Basically just... Why do we always slip going onto this bridge? I mean, I was moving carefully. Okay. Alright, strange questions over. That's five, so we should have the rest down here. Except I landed on a Mr. Blizzard. But yeah, I really, I just hope people like what I do. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'm not... It would... Would it be nice to be famous? Absolutely. Probably wouldn't like the drama, any of the drama that came with it, because everyone's gonna try... There will be always be people who try and shoot you down, I suppose. But, like I said, I'm happy to recommend the things that make me happy and to... Uh, and to show appreciation for them. 
Okay, so sorry if that winds up. So and somebody next. Jeez, somebody next door has got like. There's a. You know that you. I might have mentioned the the dog that just wouldn't shut up. Yeah, the, whoever li whoever lives there. I don't know if it's the same people or not, but someone has the worst smoker's cough. And I thought it was bad having something stuck in my throat with my hay fever. Ugh. At least it sounds like smoker's cough. It could be some sort of other other lung condition, so I just hope I hope they're alright. I mean that's the thing. It's actually kind of it's really kind of draining for me to actually get angry with people. Sometimes I'll get frustrated at them if they genuinely deserve it, but it's still kind of exhausting getting angry with people. I mean, sometimes you do have to get a bit angry because people do deserve it, but still. I think I'd rather try and spread a bit of positivity. There we go! So, one more and that is Snowman's lost his head! 29 lives and 29 stars. So I will take Mario in to get uh, to get to the uh, star, first star in Dire Dire Docks and fight Bowser. Now here's a, a I'm not sure. Now they've even done a dissection on people have even dissected how this works in Super Mario 64. There were two specific trigger points that you had to pass in order to get the snowball to follow you. As long as you activated those trigger points by passing through them, you would be able to get the snowball to follow you, and if you stood in the right spot, then it would crash into the head and you'd wind up making the snowman. You did not actually have to slide all the way down. You just had to pass through those two specific points. The fact that people have been able to analyze and dissect this, the origin, the N64 original, is kind of beautiful. It's something really special in a way. There's so much knowledge available. Coming for me. Run! There we go! We have done it! Ah, and he smiles! How nice! There we are! A great new body! Now, I wonder... We can eat stars! Huh! There you go! Well, thank you very much for joining me! Till next time, this is Red 2, returning to base.